Hi, and thanks for checking out this video on Adobe InDesign CC, which I've been using since it first came out a long time ago. I'm a qualified teacher. I'm an Adobe ACI. I've got five books in print. I've got the ACE qualification in these three programs. And this is my own company, tunnelvisionltd.co.uk. If you go to that website, you'll find links to the full course on Udemy and Skillshare and lots of other stuff. And I hope you like it. And if you do, please sign up. So here's the shape tool. Now you've got two. This is called a frame tool, and this is just the shape tool. So that's a rectangle frame. This is just the rectangle. Basically, they are synonymous. Adobe recommends that you use this one to create frames on the page as placeholders that you're going to put stuff into. You could just as well use this one. It really doesn't make any difference. These shapes have a big diagonal X in them, and personally, I prefer not to clutter up my work with big diagonal X's, so I tend to use this one. Now, there's a flyout menu. You can tell that little dark bottom right-hand corner. If you want to see the flyout, there's two ways. You either right-click on the tool, and then the flyout appears, or you just put the cursor on the tool and hold it down for a second, and then the flyout appears. You slide along to the tool you want to use and click on it, and that tool stays selected until you choose something else. You don't have to keep coming back and clicking on it. So I've chosen the tool. Now I'm going to choose the colors. And that means you choose the fill color and the stroke color. So I'm going to give it a fill of green. And I'll leave the stroke color as black. That's fine. I'm happy with that. And I'll draw the shape. And there it is. And up here on the control bar, it tells me the width and the height where it is on the page, X is how far in from the left, Y is how far down from the top, and it's measuring this point, the middle of the left-hand side. If I click on a different reference point, the numbers change. If I click on all of these top reference points, the X field changes, but the Y field doesn't because they're all the same distance down from the top of the page. Now, I can't move this shape with this tool, the rectangle tool will only allow me to draw rectangles, even though this shape is selected. The only way I could change its dimensions now are in the control bar. If I wanted to draw a perfect square, I could hold down the shift key and then click and drag, and there's a perfect square. There's the ellipse tool as well, which is identical. You draw an ellipse, or you hold down the shift key, and you draw a circle. Now with both these tools, if you want to tell it what size you want, you choose the tool, and then you just click on the page, and this window appears. And here's the width and the height. This is taken from the last shape that I drew. If I want another one that's identical, I click OK, and it appears where I clicked to open this window. You don't really need to do that. It's usually just as easy to draw the shape you want and size it how you want. But the exception is with the third tool on the flyout, and that's the polygon tool. Now, I do recommend that you click on the page before you draw this one, because as well as having a width and a height, it's also got the number of sides that you're going to have and a star inset. Now, if I say this is going to have five sides and no star inset, that's the shape I get. If I say it's going to have five sides and a 50% star inset, that's the shape I get. Now, for a long time, I thought that once you got the shape like that and you let go of it, you couldn't change the number of sides. Not so. I only found this out recently. It's nice. You keep on learning with this stuff. It's pretty cool. I've got the shape selected. I'm going to double click on the polygon tool. And this window opens. And if I change the number of sides to 9 and the star inset to 90%, as soon as I click OK, that's what happens. So you can update shapes once you've drawn them. Before we leave shapes behind, there's one other thing that I think you'll get a kick out of. So I'm going to go get the rectangle tool. And over in the swatches window, I'll choose red as the fill color. And I'm going to draw a rectangle, like so. Now I'm going to go get the ellipse tool. And I'll draw a red-filled ellipse over here. 
Now, if I wanted to combine those two shapes, let's say I wanted to put this ellipse like that, but I want to combine them so there's only one outline, so this black stroke on the ellipse would not be visible. This is how you do it. You select both shapes, and then you go Window, Object and Layout, Pathfinder. The Pathfinder window contains all kinds of goodies, but this is the one I'm interested in, the Pathfinder icons. This one is Add, and it'll add those two shapes together leaving me with a single outline. That's now one shape. Cool, huh? Now I'm going to do Command or Control Z to undo that. The second icon would cut the top object away from the bottom object, like that. The third icon will leave me only the area where they overlap. The fourth icon leaves me with everything but where they overlap. And the fifth icon cuts the bottom object away from the top object, like so. Now you've got a lot of options there, which can really save you a lot of time. Pathfinder came originally from Illustrator. I actually prefer it in InDesign. I think it's a little more intuitive. Anyway, there you have it. Have fun. So I hope that video was really useful to you, and please do let me know what you think. You can contact me through my website at www.tunnelvisionltd.co.uk. Please do. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.